Good morning. Good morning, Allison. How are you today? Well, I'm do I, I want to update you. I have, and all of our viewers who I know have thought about nothing but this since last week, I have um, almost no corn left. Every night the raccoon comes in and eats some and I find the corn cob strewn about. And he or she, the menace, is eating. They're not ripe yet. So I can't like pick them to keep them from being eaten. They're not good enough for me to eat yet, but they're fine for the raccoon. And so um, I have like three stalks left like in the center of my little plot. And I don't even, I mean, I don't even know at this point I don't know. Anyway, so that's that's the update on that. I was discouraging, but um, I what think- What thing are you doing for the local raccoon community? I, I Well-fed with healthy, healthy vegetables. Healthy, organic, <laughs> non-GMO corn. So, oh well. Um, I did have two ears of it last weekend and it was good. Two that had been, had a chance to ripen. So that, you know, I, I do know it's good. They're having something tasty, but I think maybe yeah. corn is not the vegetable I need to be planting in my yard. Not until you can get the raccoons under control. <laughs> no. No, it, no, no. So it's fine. Anyway, that's how I am. How are you this morning? I'm good. Good. I apologize if you hear some sniffling. I forgot my allergy medicine a few times this week. So you'll might hear some sniffles in this broadcast. I apologize. <laughs> I'm just like coming, like the allergies are like coming up again. You know, I feel like there'll be areas, times where I don't even really think about it very much. And I'm like, oh, I could probably stop taking my medicine. And the next thing you know, it starts up again. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. It's like something new pops up every now, every couple of mm -hmm. weeks. And it's like, oh yeah, that's that you're allergic to too. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yes. I know. I would love to get the test done, but I also have a feeling like wherever they do it, your back or whatever, my whole back would just be inflamed. It'd be like, well, you're allergic to everything. The point of doing the test was really you know, yeah. null and void because it's just all of it. <laughs> the entire universe mm -hmm. aggravates your allergies. Have fun with that. Yeah. <laughs> Good luck to you. We don't know what to tell you. So, <laughs> well, you want I'm to get started? About what we're talking about today. Yes. Yeah, so, yeah, I, I want to dive right in. Go ahead. <laughs> right. Yeah. I, yeah. I just kind of want to get going. So, Yesterday, we were like, what do we want to talk about? And as usual, it was a meandering conversation that ended up landing on, it began with Nancy Drew. And then yeah. we just started talking about all the things that we used to love reading. And yeah. yes, and so that's what we are excited <laughs> to talk about today. Yeah, those books that, oh my gosh, that we so, so loved reading as kids and went back to again and again. And the characters, the man, you kind of really felt like they were your friends and, or, oh, you wanted to be like them because they were so sophisticated and their life was so cool. So, yeah. They were so sophisticated and so grown up. And in many of the, in many of the books, which we might hit on, like, they also were, they represented just like a type of person that no one is only that type of person, but they like represented like a personality trait or something. Mm -hmm. So, like, am I like this one? Am I like this one? Am I like this one? Well, you know, and then you'd be stressed that you couldn't, um, you couldn't be just one of them. But I, I realize now as an adult that maybe that wasn't the point. Maybe no one was ever going to just be like the cool one or the smart one or the artsy <laughs> one or whatever. Right. Tara has uh, chimed in. Sweet Valley, Nancy Drew, and Sleepover Friends. I never read the Sleepover Friends. Me neither. Oh, and and all the. the Louis McDaniel. Daniels, yes. Heavy. It was some heavy stuff in those books, but that was another very soft focus cover, which mm -hmm. unites yeah. many. Very, very. It's, it's really. It's funny because you can you can oh Babysitters Club, yes, absolutely. Like you can picture those covers for those books. Like they all had a certain style. Like it just. Yes, and each each author had their own style of covers, like the Baby Sitters Club with the 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 blocks across the top. Yeah, like it's just like you can you can picture those books, like the Sweet Valley High with the circle mm -hmm. and the Sweet Valley. Yeah, like yes, yes. I know. I and Nancy Drew is kind of the odd man out in this, but I think we should start with that because I feel like most I don't I don't want to over generalize, but a lot of like teen girl readers began with Nancy Drew. Like if you're reading Sweet Valley High, you probably read some Nancy Drew before that. And I mean, those books started being started written in like the thirties, you know, they go way back 
there's just too many of them to even count in number. They've been written and rewritten and rewritten and updated. But um, I think most of us are in our Nancy. Nancy, I've got two very distinct cover images in my head. The yellow ones with the, with the yellow back and then, then the cover on the front. And then the library had this copy, this, this set of them. They had this weird beige color with like this blue ink on the front and like it was like a darker I, I can't even describe the images on the front but the books were like these weird beige color but it was kind of textured and they had like all this dirt and grime on them from the decades of people yeah. reading I do not remember those. The the older ones are the ones that I I read my mom's copies, and mm -hmm. so um and she I was lucky enough that she had a quite an array of them. She still does, but they're at her house, so I couldn't pull any of them. Um, so she yeah. pulled them, um, and they're they were the yellow the yellow covers. Um, and then I know I think that we may have posted it here in the comments, but uh, you had mentioned the Nancy Drew Files, which was like an eighties version, which has a totally different. Oh cover. my god, you think files covers. Those ones are great. The eighties, they those ones were so eighties style, and yeah. like the blazer jackets with the with the shoulder pads, yeah. and the, that that pink, teal and purple jacket that I think that's the one I think everyone either had or coveted. Yes, um, I think the picture that Mary posted in our comments here because uh, I sent it to her as an example because it was so characteristic between that and then that one you found with the really high and long shorts. Um, okay. Between the two, but I posted the jacket because we all know and love the yes, jacket. Real jacket situation. But the original Nancy Drews in her like you know nineteen forties clothes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I spent one summer. I I, read, I loved Nancy Drew. She was like one of the first book series that I really fell in love with and really started reading. I think you know that was around the time that I actually started reading books. Um, I struggled with reading as a child. Um, I had some weird thing going on with my eyes and it was just very difficult for me. Um, so I hated reading when I was little because it, it was very difficult for me. But it was something that the eye doctor said I would eventually grow out of. It wasn't like dyslexia or anything like that. And I did. And around that time that reading was coming easily for me, Nancy Drew were, were the books that I was really into. So I spent one summer like reading all these Nancy Drew books and I was convinced my house had to have a secret passage in it. Lily, you can tell. We we grew up in this house that was like built in the 1890s, I think. I mean, it was like super old. And like, I was convinced that there had to be a secret passage in there somewhere. And I like spent one summer like knocking on walls and pushing, cause that's what, she, you know, she does. She knocks on the walls in the hollow spot. Yeah. Or, you know, pushing on like little nubs and like, Things will spring up. I spent one summer going all around the house, doing that all over the place. And like at one point I got out the measuring tape and I'm like measured the length of the hallway and then measured the length of my room thinking there had to be enough difference that there could be like a passageway in there. I was the biggest Nancy Drew nerd. I'm so sorry that I'm assuming you never found a secret passage. You didn't. If that's a shame given that your house was so old. I mean, you know. There was a really creepy room off the basement that was like scary. <laughs> yeah, we had that room in my basement too. I did, and I actually currently have that room in my current basement and I don't go in there, but <laughs> that's because I mainly because I'm afraid of spiders at this point. Like my, my sense of creepiness has kind of transformed and I don't now think there's like something living in there. It's just that there's spiders and I don't want to deal with it. But yes, we also had that creepy room. There was like actually under the sidewalk, and there was like a grate in the sidewalk, and you could see the light, the light coming through the grate. It was creepy. Yeah. yeah. Um, we've got a lot of comments. <laughs> nice. Uh, Tara wants to know if we watched the Babysitters Club on Netflix. I have not. Have you? No. I I loved those books, and I'm a little afraid to to try this show. Um, <laughs> Lily mentions the Choose Your Own Adventure books with the oh, I got a lot of those. I loved those. Those were a lot of fun. Yes. Carrie was a nonfiction nerd from the start. Yeah, I've heard a lot of nonfiction too. Yeah. Um, Anne of Green Gables and the Sunfire books. I'm not familiar with the Sunfire books, but I do remember the Anne of Green Gables books. I'm yes. not familiar with Sunfire either, but I didn't read Anne of Green Gables. I read it last year. It was the first time I'd ever read Anne of Green Gables, and I actually listened to the audio. Audio wasn't great, but that's fine. But I really did enjoy the story. So I kept going. I think I'm on five now and I took a little bit of a break, but I'll probably start again in the fall. And, um, and they're just such gentle 
stories. Yeah, really. I um, loved the, they always played it when PBS was doing their fundraiser drive. Like that's the, that, that's the series that they would show the, our local PBS station. And so I would always watch it every time they did their fundraiser drive because I loved that series. Yeah, I've and never I, seen yeah, it. It was totally, <laughs> I measured walls and closets. Like I was convinced there had to be a, a secret passage in that house somewhere. Well, I was so disappointed I never found one. Yeah, well, you would be really stressed too. In my upstairs, there's this little area that's kind of like a cutout. And I mean, it really just goes into like, an attic crawl space like as something that's just this is like a little thing like this big that you know they had to check when i moved into the house or whatever so i know that space is there but man that would have really tormented you you would have been like what's behind this little indentation well hopefully not a raccoon's nest that's the only thing that i think of when i when i see it but, uh, I would have crawled in there to just to you probably out. would have no. Uh, Judith says that the Fun Sunfire is a series of young adult historical romance novels published oh. by I don't know how I missed those. Are they in our reference book here? <gasps> Liz, how could you be late? And how can you have a meeting so early in the morning? Yeah, oh gosh, I know. So unfair. I think we would... Yeah, that's very unfair to be at a meeting. So Leah and I both have a copy here of this book and then I'm looking in to see if Sunfire is in. Oh, Paperback Crush, uh, the totally radical history of 80s and 90s teen fiction. I love this book. I actually haven't read any of it. All I've done is flip through it and be like, wow, my mom spent a whole, whole lot of money, um, and dad, my parents, spent a whole lot of money on books because so many of these books, like you look at these covers, you're like, Invisible Lisa, yep, had that one. Um, it, like You look at these books and you're like, I had this book, it was on my bookshelf. It was yeah. just like, yeah. Oh, yeah. these books, just like, and that Megan the Klutz one, like where she's eating the pizza and dropping it on her white shorts. I remember that book. I remember that one. Like R.L. Stein. Yes, R.L. Stein. Who else? Who else was a Christopher Pike fan? I mean, I read some of it, but not a ton. I love it. Answer in the comments. I don't see that Sunfire thing in here. Uh -huh. um, but. I have, when Leah and I went to a conference last fall, back when those were things that we were allowed and able to do, um, the it's author of was there. And so I got like her signature. Um, so that was exciting. But yeah. Found it. Sunfire. Oh, okay. Nice. <laughs> so nice. Yep. It, it's amazing. Like all the books that we grew up with are in here. And it's just like, you, you go through this book and you're like, oh my God. Like, I remember all of these. Yeah, and there were definitely different genres, um, and even in the same series, different genres. We talked a lot about Sweet Valley High yesterday and about how yeah. there was like the mystery, like they solved mysteries sometimes. There was like a sub-series where they did that. Um, mm -hmm. and, and then when they went off to college, Sweet Valley University. Yeah. Yes, and um, then they've even like reinvented and reinvented over and over again with each generation a different version because even with the babysitters club there was like a 90s like a late 90s little sisters well no there was little sisters but there was another version where it was diaries the pages were lined and they wrote diaries and i picture it being a very like dawson's creek type of thing but i'm not i can't I, like that's the era i associate it with but i could be wrong about that but it was diary entries written by each of them and there was you know still a book focusing on each character but um, so they've just been reinvented and reinvented and reinvented to apply to whatever current era we're in. Because I know Nancy Drew's the same. You know, there's still Nancy Drew books coming out, but she's just she looks a little different and the plots are a little different. But yeah, it was like it was really cool. Like you know, they're the things that are that are always steady with her. Her boyfriend Ned and her friends Bess and George, and um, George is the tomboy and Bess is the. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny, it's just like, and she always yep. has a convertible, but um, <laughs> yes, I know, I know. The mysteries she solves are very different. Yes, well, for sure. And Tara mentioned best day of the week was Friday when we got the Scholastic Book Magazine at school, and I'd spent all my allowance on books, and that was I was counting out change that my envelope would be full of like pennies and 
dimes and nickels and that would just you know I however much I could scrape together I was just buying books every just that's I mean that's what my money was for yeah like seriously flipping through here I'm just like yeah my parents spent a fortune on books thank you know those scholastic catalogs were the best things ever and I remember um like there were certain books that I totally went to the library and got like Nancy Drew. She was, she was mm -hmm. one that I went to the library and I got those, you know, book after book after book. I went mm -hmm. whatever was on the shelf. The next one I, I picked up. Um, but there were, there was something about like these paperback books that you bought at the scholastic book fair mm -hmm. about like, having them at home and on your shelf and um, passing them around amongst your friends and like everyone reading the same book. And it just, I, mean, I didn't have that. I never, I never had reading friends. Mm -mm. Okay. No. Yeah. And we like later middle school. Yeah. And then we would, like, especially like with Christopher Pike, um, we would pass those around. Yeah. Remember, it got to the point like with Christopher Pike where I couldn't even wait for it to get in the, uh, I was at the bookstore buying them. Like I, I would, it would say coming out in September of, you know, whatever year, yeah. I would say a year. And I would, I would, I would like call the bookstore. I'm like, do you have this book yet? And they're like, it's not out yet. <laughs> and, you know, going to the mall, going to the mall, to the Walden's book mm -hmm. <laughs> store at the mall and buying um, those books and then like reading it as fast as I could and then letting my one friend who loved reading and borrow it and like it would make yeah. its way around the circle of friends. So, yeah, that's really nice. And now look, you've got karmic retribution and now you answer phones where people call in and say, is this book out yet? And you're like, no, it's not out yet. Or <laughs> I'll put you on hold for it, but it's been delayed. There you go. <laughs> yeah, and the um, my Babysitters Club books I got from my cousin. Um, my cousin Melissa, she was older than me, and so when she was done with her Babysitters Club books, I got just this boatload of Babysitters Club, and so that was incredible. Thank you, Melissa. Thank you, Renee, her mom, my aunt, for getting those. I also got her Barbie stuff, which I mean, what a treasure trove for like a little girl to be hand me down, <laughs> handed down all these. Barbie clothes and babysitters club books. What else? Perfect. I want. Um, I want to talk about Sweet Valley High too for a second because when we were talking about this yesterday, um, I had like looked and we were <laughs> we were enjoying ourselves. We we're looking up some things about Sweet Valley High, and there was um, like we talked about how there's these different sub series, and then sometimes just kind of like things just kind of got crazier and crazier. And I came across this plot wherein a girl moves to town who looks exactly like Elizabeth and Jessica. Um, and essentially you find out that she wants to basically kill one of them and take their place and be one of the twins. And, they, you know, they were her plan in a way that you think that she has died. I imagine she falls off a cliff or something. I'm not sure. But then like, it turns out she comes back and not only that, but she also has a twin. So there's like two sets of twins that look a lot like each other. And so then they come together and they decide they're going to kill both twins and take their place, which I don't, I didn't read it and I don't want to spoil anything, but I'm pretty sure it doesn't, that doesn't actually happen. I think they're thwarted again. Um, but in yeah, that article, the thoughts were crazy. Like, yes. So in that article I had read like the, the, the it was an article in bustle. And so they were describing, you know, like, I think about this book plot all the time. It was so crazy. Why were these crazy plots, you know, just kind of like reflecting on it. It was a good article, um, but they talked about the appeal of the alternate reality um, that existed in Sweet Valley and books like it and about how it came after a decade of the realism offered by Judy Bloom. And so Sweet Valley High was just like the opposite. It was pastel, it was romantic, it was a bunch of action. Um, instead of contemplation, it was a world where just it was a fantasy and it was just it was in contrast to what came the decade before, which I think puts it in a different perspective and makes you kind of understand the soapy zaniness of it was just feeding into something kids hadn't had yet. And someone described it as I was I was looking at something, too, and they described it as the Jackie Collins for teens. <laughs> You know that that crazy and like some like it got to the point like where like there was like these future stories and like there was a TV series with it and like and then like a a follow up like where they were like grown and like 
the older brother ends up gay. I mean, like, like stuff that was never in the books. And it's just mm-hmm. like, but like, yes. with, with the Sweet Valley, Tara said that she was, she liked Elizabeth. I think I liked Elizabeth. I liked Elizabeth too. I always thought that Jessica was kind of like, I don't know. She was too much like Lila, who was that, um, she was, you know, she was jealous of Jessica, but then like, they were like best friends and enemies, kind of. I think that was like the first frenemies, although we didn't have that term back then. And it was just, Jessica was just too, she was too concerned with the, the being popular and all of that. I think, I think also that was unattainable, whereas Elizabeth was more like, you know, the book smart one. And she, she seemed more relatable, I think. Yeah. Yeah. And if you, and a lot of people, a lot of people read these books and it kind of, you know, shaped some of their either reading experience or just kind of adolescent growing up experience. And um, Roxane Gay has a really good essay about Sweet Valley High in her book, Bad Feminist. Um, And so I do, and you could probably find the essay online and you can probably find other things, but I really enjoyed reading Roxane Gay. She, she talks a lot about, um, you know, the Elizabeth Jessica dichotomy and, and, you know, what that does to you when you're reading it and everything. And, um, I really did enjoy that essay. And also, if you've never read anything by Roxane Gay, I enjoyed Bad Feminist, but I liked Hunger a lot more and I would definitely recommend Hunger. But her essay about Sweet Valley High is a bad feminist. I once had a dream in which Roxane Gay appeared. She was working at a coffee shop and she was trying to make my coffee and she was really bad at it. She could not make coffee. Um, But, um, oh, his name just popped out of my head. Uh, the guy who was on um, um, Northern Exposure, um, that guy who was the doctor, um, he was like the coffee shop manager and he was chatting me up while she was ma- messing up the coffee. And it was just like, it was crazy situation. It was crazy, really weird, detailed dream. Very um, specific. If you what? ever get the chance, it's very specific. And if you ever get the chance to like, if I picture us, if we ever get to go to a a, you know, convention again or whatever. If there's ever a chance for you to meet Roxane Gay, you have to tell her that story. Do not ever give her a job working in a coffee shop. Yeah, no. dreams. There you go. I, had you just read something by her? Where no. did she? Come from? It was just like really random. She just was oh working in the coffee shop, and she was not good at making coffee. This has derailed me. That is ridiculous. That is <laughs> actually. At some point, you need to tell you the whole dream because we don't have enough time today. It's it oh was my. insane. I can't wait to hear about that, but we'll have to pencil that in. We'll have to have a very important phone call about that. <laughs> <laughs> Lily Rod says, Morrow. Morrow. "Yes, thank you, Lily." Rod Morrow. Yes, he was chatting me up. Oh yeah. my god! <laughs> um, I did when I was flipping through here in our, our textbook here. Um, I did see there's also a page that if you do check this out from the library, I do recommend it. There is a feature about being the cover model for a book like this. And that that's kind of fun, kind of fun to read. And then, you know, there's one about like the iconic art of the covers and things like that. So I would say, and then, so if we're talking about the different genres, there's also, I think Christopher Pike might fit into this one, this like suspense genres where someone has been taken and it's not like solving a mystery, like Sweet Valley High girls are solving a mystery, no offense to them, but it's not super intense. Um, But then there's the ones where someone has been taken, someone is missing. It's like a really serious, yeah, pulpy mystery or whatever. So that was kind of another avenue of them. And this is a little bit later and it's not quite as much teen, but Robert Cormier, I guess how you pronounce his name. He wrote a ton of books that were all very serious like that. Yeah. Um, and I read, I read, I read all those. Carolyn B. Cooney also yes. um, wrote some um, very like, th- there was like a really mystery, like the face on the You're side the of the curtain. Yeah. Like where the kid has gone missing and now she's back. Yeah. Like it was yeah. just like, yeah. those ones were really interesting too. And they, they made yeah. you think about like, oh my God, I could be kidnapped. <laughs> no. Yeah, yeah, they didn't have like the romance element. They were a grittier. Um, mm-hmm. Their covers were not soft focus. Um, there was no, there was no uh, feathered, <laughs> feathered hair on the covers of those. Um, yeah. So yeah. That 
I just keep picturing those Nancy Drew files, those books that were written in the 80s with like the Farrah Fawcett hair and the, the puffy jacket, the windbreaker. Yeah, and I don't know, maybe this is me being shallow, but like what I remember from pretty much all of these books is what the people wore. And it's because the color, the covers were so distinct. And then also because I was always a little bit younger than the characters in the book. So I looked at them like they're so yes. sophisticated, they're so grown up. I wanted to be Claudia from Babysitter's Club so badly. So cool. She had giant so cool. geometric earrings. She would wear like these oversized sweaters with, with leggings that, you know, just had these crazy patterns and stuff. On the one cover, she's in these like yellow bib overalls, which I remember. And I had a pair of red bib overall, short bib overalls. Um, <laughs> And just like I could, it was, I was like, oh, it's like this primary color overall that's like Claudia. And I just, I, and, and so then, but going back to like Nancy Drew, her 40s clothes, I just, all mm -hmm. of that out to Nancy me. Drew was all so well put together, like her mm -hmm. outfits and yeah. heels even. And I just, that really is what sticks with me from these stories more than anything is just remembering how cool in my mind they look. Mm -hmm. and yes. How much I wanted to be as cool. Yes, and like to do the cool stuff that they did too. I know. I, know. You know, I remember even like with 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 the the babysitters club. There were some mysteries there, like mm -hmm. you know, like um, like some of those stories. They were it, it was just like they were just so awesome, and they were so smart, and it just it was really interesting. I know, and they always, even though they would like have they would have crises but like they always came out being like confident and like building each other up and i think that was something else that was attractive about it they were always confident by the end of the book in their abilities and and in who they were and i think that that is really attractive yeah. to a teenage girl <laughs> to or a preteen girl or an elementary school girl or an adult woman um to be really about and i think that that is something that was appealing about them too um Somebody mentioned, Tara mentioned also the boxcar children, which is a little bit later, but, or at least for me, it's a little bit, it's a little bit different, but I did, the boxcar children were also someone I was very envious of because they got to live in a boxcar. It was a different uh, vibe, I guess. Those were ones that I never read. Yeah. And that's what I was thinking that, that maybe you didn't, maybe they weren't as popular when you were like in second grade or whenever I don't. I, I never read the boxcar children. Yeah. So. Well, they lived in a boxcar and they were orphans, and that made things awesome because you know they were so self sufficient, and they they also had some like mysteries to solve and different things to do. But it was also very serious. They had to like take care of each other, like the oldest girl, mm -hmm. Violet, Tara. Help me out. I don't know. There was I can't remember their names, but um, they had to just like take care of one another, and um, and you know they were just it was kind of like a Robinson, or like a Swiss Family Robinson situation. But like way scaled down because they were just like on their own. Okay, I don't know. It was fun. And it's funny, like the the books that like we are talking about. Um, people who are, you know, coming up behind us, they they didn't read these. They they read like Lemony Snicket, and it's just like mm -hmm. it's funny. You know, like, what what was that? I read Lemony Snicket too. That was popular when I was young. That was that was mm -hmm. a that I. Mm -hmm. Yep, I have, I have more oh, yeah. years. <laughs> or maybe yeah. I didn't realize I was that old. <laughs> well, I, and I mean, the, when I'm reading Sweet Valley High, I'm reading, no offense to my current library employer, really old ratty copies at the library on the spinner racks. Um, and they were, I remember them being ratty then, but how is the library gonna get rid of them? Clearly we were checking them out and reading them. Um, right. and. So, but I remember they were taped together. You know, those were the Sweet Valley Highs that I was reading. They were, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they had gone through my generation, so. <laughs> yes. yes, they had been heavily used, which is awesome. And that is why oh, we wow. still have them. Because they were paperback, they probably were out of print. We probably couldn't order them anymore. So like, you know, we always are just gonna try to keep it for as many circulations as we can get out of it, especially for, you know, the kids who definitely just want to read the story, they're not yeah. sorry that there's some tape on the cover. I didn't care what the books looked like. Mm. like when we passed no. them around and we shared them, there'd be pages falling out in the middle. We'd just shove them back in. Shove them back in. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this is Jesse 
and watch, watch the, dog. the dog. Thank you, Tara. Thank you. Yeah, Henry was then probably the oldest boy and Violet was the oldest girl. And then they just had to care for one another. And um, yeah. Yeah, that was what that wasn't a series I read. So yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm really happy we got to talk about this today. It was it was fun. And I would recommend this book, even if you don't want to read it, you want to flip through it and see these book covers because I, I bet you had probably at least 10 of these in your house because you picked them up at the, the, the Scholastic Book Fair. They were amazing. And yes. <laughs> yes. So please check out that book or find a copy of it online somewhere because it is really fun to look at the covers or do what Leah and I did yesterday, which is search Google image search Sweet, Feet, Sweet Valley High oh. and then or Nancy Drew or whatever. And then just like scroll through the covers and I'm like, oh, my gosh. I read that I one. <laughs> Yeah. Yes. This book is so much fun. You will love the covers and it just, it'll take you back. <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks for hanging out everybody. And uh, we'll see you next week. Oh, Liz wants to know, is there one for 1990 to 2000? Liz is a little, little bit younger. Um, well, some of these are in the nineties. Yeah. For sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, but Maybe we can reach out and to the author. Even like books from the seventies, like it starts out with like some of the the older fiction that was in the seventies. So um, it's a yeah, and it kind of it kind of like traces sort of like the genre up until the point where it sort of tapered off into other other types of reading, like the Lemony Snicket, yeah. you know, type of books. But these were these were so popular for so long, Liz, I feel like you would still recognize the covers, especially working in the library, being in the library. I'm sure that you would remember these from the shelves because they're the kind of thing that a library is not going to get rid of until it literally has fallen to pieces because that's how much kids read it. Yeah. That was a fun time. No worries yeah. back then. <laughs> I mean, or a lot of worries that I was going to have some kind of ghost oh. twin come back and haunt me. I didn't even know I had a twin, but here she is haunting me. Red hair. There was a book, Red Hair, I think is what the title, the red one. Red hair. I think it was I think it was called Red Hair. It was about twins. And the one twin thought her mother and her twin died, but they didn't. The parents got divorced and each parent took a twin. And it was... Oh my gosh. It sounds a little bit like the parent trap. Actually, they didn't, they didn't do that. The mother kidnapped the other twin um, and faked their death. So that they could come back and yeah, that was that one sounds good. good. That one sounds very very good. Yes, and so yeah, maybe there weren't worries, or maybe you took it all very seriously, and there were a lot of worries. Yeah, because you were afraid that maybe there was also like nothing like that is ever going to happen in my life. <laughs> out there was no secret passage in your house. You realized that your life was right. just boring. Boring. Yep. <laughs> well, we'll see you guys next week. And if you have any other book suggestions, leave them in the comments. Yeah. And uh, we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.